This video is going to be about phase change calculations. We'll be completing two example problems on calculating heat energy when substances are heated through phase changes. Please watch the previous videos about phase diagrams if you've not done so before, or some of the material discussed in this video may be confusing. What is the heat in joules required to convert 25.0 grams of negative 10 degrees Celsius ice into 150 degrees Celsius steam? Some useful information to know is that the heat of fusion of water is equal to 334 joules per gram. The heat of vaporization of water is equal to 2,257 joules per gram. The specific heat of ice is equal to 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius. The specific heat of liquid water is equal to 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the specific heat of steam is equal to 2.09 joules per per gram degree Celsius. First, it might be helpful to understand what is happening by viewing a heating curve. A heating curve has temperature on the vertical axis and the heat energy put into the system on the horizontal axis. If we start here at negative 10 degrees Celsius, the temperature will increase for a while until we get to the water's melting temperature, and we'll need to calculate the heat energy required to do this transition. Then the heat energy will go into breaking the intermolecular bonds of the water to change from solid to a liquid. This is a separate heat energy calculation. Then, after all the intermolecular bonds are broken, the temperature will increase again until we get to water's boiling temperature. This is again a separate heat energy calculation. Then the heat energy will go into breaking the hydrogen bonds between all the water molecules so the water will vaporize. Again, another separate heat energy calculation. Then the temperature will increase again until we get to 150 degrees Celsius. The point of drawing this heating curve is to show that we'll have to calculate all these heat energy inputs separately and then add them together to get the total heat required. The first part of the heating curve is to increase the temperature from negative 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius, which is the melting temperature of water. The equation to solve this portion of the problem is Q is equal to MC delta T. The equation is covered in the calorimetry section of your textbook. The only point in introducing it here is to know that you need to convert everything to joules to get the total heat energy. The mass of the ice is 25.0 grams. The specific heat of the ice is 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the change in temperature is 0 degrees Celsius minus negative 10 degrees Celsius, which equals 10 degrees Celsius. The specific heat units are joules per gram degree Celsius. To get this unit in joules, multiply by the mass in grams and change the temperature in degrees Celsius. The heat of this transition is calculated as 25.0 grams times 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius times 10 degrees Celsius, which equals 522.5 joules. The second part of the heating curve is the energy it takes to break intermolecular forces from a solid to a liquid. This heat equation is Q is equal to mass times the heat of fusion. The mass of water is 25.0 grams, and the heat of fusion of water is 334 joules per gram. The heat energy of this transition is calculated as 25.0 grams times 334 joules per gram, which equals 8,350 joules. The third part of the heating curve is the increase in temperature from 0 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling temperature of water. The equation to solve this portion of the problem is Q is equal to mc delta T. The mass of the water is 25.0 grams. The specific heat of liquid water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the change in temperature is 100 degrees Celsius minus 0 degrees Celsius, which equals 100 degrees Celsius. The heat of this transition is calculated as 25.0 grams times 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius times 100 degrees Celsius, which equals 10,450 joules. The fourth part of the heating curve is the energy it takes to break the hydrogen bonds from a liquid to a gas. This equation is Q equals mass times the heat of vaporization. The mass of the water is 25.0 grams, and the heat of vaporization of water is 2,000 257 joules per gram. The heat energy of this transition is calculated as 25.0 grams times 2,257 joules per gram, which equals 56,425 joules. The 
final part of the heating curve is the increase in temperature from 100 degrees to 150 degrees Celsius. The equation to solve this portion of the problem is Q is equal to MC delta T. The mass of the water is 25.0 grams. The specific heat of steam is 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is 150 degrees Celsius minus 100 degrees Celsius, which equals 50 degrees Celsius. The heat of this transition is calculated as 25.0 grams times 2.09 joules per gram degree Celsius times 50 degrees Celsius, which equals 2,612.5 joules. The total amount of heat required to change 25.0 grams of solid ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius to steam at 150 degrees Celsius is just the total of all of the heat energies calculated. So it equals 522.5 joules plus 8,350 joules plus 10,450 joules plus 56,425 joules plus 2,612.5 joules, which equals 78,360 joules of heat energy. Octane has a normal boiling point of 125.7 degrees Celsius. How much energy in kilojoules would be required to change 22.3 moles of liquid octane at 25.6 degrees Celsius to a vapor at its boiling point? The molar heat capacity of liquid octane is 254.6 joules per mole degree Celsius, and its heat of vaporization is 41.5 kilojoules per mole. We could draw another heat diagram for this problem, but it will actually look very similar to the one we've already drawn for water. There are a couple differences in this problem compared to our first water problem. The first is that we're starting with a liquid, not a solid, so we don't have to go through the melting phase. The other difference is that we're dealing with moles instead of grams, but they have also given you all the constants you need in moles already. The first part of the heat energy we need to calculate is the increase in temperature from 25.6 degrees Celsius to 125.7 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling temperature of octane. The equation to solve this portion of the problem is Q is equal to moles times heat capacity times the change in temperature. The amount of moles is 22.3 moles. The molar heat capacity of liquid octane is 254.6 joules per mole degree Celsius. And the change in temperature is 125.7 degrees Celsius minus 25.6 degrees Celsius, which equals 100.1 degrees Celsius. The heat for this transition is calculated as 22.3 moles times 254.6 joules per mole degree Celsius times 100.1 degrees Celsius, which equals 568,326 joules. Remember that they want the final answer in kilojoules, so divide by 1,000 to get 568.3 kilojoules. The next part of the heat energy we need to calculate is the energy it takes to break the intermolecular forces from a liquid to a gas. This heat equation is Q is equal to moles times the heat of vaporization. The amount of moles is 22.3 moles, and the heat of vaporization of octane is 41.5 kilojoules per mole. The heat energy for this transition is calculated as 22.3 moles times 41.5 kilojoules per mole, which equals 925.5 kilojoules. Since this constant was given in kilojoules, we do not need to convert the answer. The total amount of heat required to change 22.3 moles of octane from 25.6 degrees Celsius to a vapor at its boiling point is just the total of all the heat energies calculated. So it equals 568.3 kilojoules plus 925.5 kilojoules, which equals 1,493.8 kilojoules of heat energy, or 1,490 kilojoules to three significant figures.